Hello there and welcome to Upper 6 Further Maths. Here we're looking at inverse hyperbolic functions so we can answer questions from exercise 6b. So the first thing we're going to do with these inverse hyperbolic functions is to draw their graph. So uh, first one up is y equals r cosh x. So just a reminder of inverse functions, you need it to be a one-to-one -one function. Uh, cosh x at the moment is a many-to-one function, so it needs to be restricted to x is greater than or equal to zero, um, so that it is a one-to-one -one function before we can find an inverse. So we're going to restrict the cosh graph to this side of the axes. Now you know that it's obviously going to be on the left-hand side as well. It's going to be a u-shaped graph. Uh, but we're only going to find the inverse of cosh on this right hand side. And remember the technique to find a graph of an inverse is to draw that y equals x line in and then reflect it over that line onto the other side. So this blue line here, this point here was 1 on the cosh graph, this point down here will also be 1 reflected over to this point here. This is the R cosh graph. And this will just carry on up to infinity on the right hand side, um, but you will see it flattening out pretty quickly, but it will go up to infinity. Moving on to part B now, the y equals r shine graph. Now this graph is already a one-to-one -one function, so it doesn't need restricting at all. Again, we'll cross over the y equals x axis. This is the original graph for shine, and this will be the new graph for r shine. So this is the r shine graph going through at 0, 0. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to prove it later on that the gradient at this point here is 1. So they are kind of like tangents to each other at this point here. Gradient equals 1. Moving on to the final graph, part C is the y equals r tanch graph. Uh, this is already a 1 to 1 function as well, so that doesn't need restricting. It's going to go through the line y equals x. We've got those asymptotes for the graph of y equals r tanch, and it needs to be reflected through the y equals x axis. Both of those asymptotes get reflected as well, so it'll be x equals 1 and x equals minus 1 on these asymptotes, um, and this graph here, the blue one, will be the r tanch graph uh, here, y equals r tanch. Okay, so we're now going to move on to defining the r cosh, r shine, and r tanch formulas. Uh, you'd expect them to have logarithms in them, because if the definitions of cosh, cosh, shine, and tanch have exponentials in them, you'd expect the inverse functions to have logarithms in them. So what we'll do is we'll prove all three of these identities. You do get them in the formula booklet, but you can also be asked to prove them in an exam as well. So I need to show you how to do them then. So r cosh is equal to this thing here. Well, where does this come from? This is an inverse function. It's the inverse of the cosh function. Notice here it's a little bit different. It's not arc cosh, it's just r cosh, r shine, and r tanch. A um, little bit different to trigonometry there. But basically what we're doing is we're finding an inverse function. So if we start off with the function and then invert it using algebra, uh, then we can prove our formula. So if we start with y equals r, if we start with y equals cosh, and the definition of cosh, and then rearrange it to make x the subject, then that is proving an inverse function. So let's go ahead and do that then. Let's multiply by 2, then multiply by e to the x, and then what we're looking to move it into here is some kind of quadratic here. We've got a squared term here, a single term here, and then a constant term at the end here. Um, so what we've turned this into is like a quadratic. And now we can use the quadratic formula on it. So it's going to be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, substituting in all of the expressions above. Simplify it a little bit, you'll get this thing here. And then we can divide everything by 2 because we've got a square root of 4 we can pull out and a 2 at the front here. So do the division by 2 and we get this thing here. The next thing to do will be to inverse the exponential, so to learn both sides, and we get this expression here. Now actually what we're going to do is we're only going to take forward the um, plus in this plus minus, and the reason is because uh, when you do y minus the square root of y squared minus 1, uh, you're going to get an answer there that's less than 1. 
And what we don't want is to have an answer less than one, because when you learn an answer less than one, uh, you're going to get something that's negative. And we don't want x to be negative because there are no x negative values in the inverse cosh um, graph. So we only want the positive one. So that's the only one we're going to take forward. So there we are. That's the answer to part A. Then you need to know how to prove it. But as I say, you do get them in the formula booklet if you ever need to use them. Moving on to part B then, how do we prove uh, part B? Well, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's still an inverse function question. So start off with the original function, then turn it into a quadratic, then apply the quadratic formula, simplify, simplify again, take logarithms. And this time, we're, again, we're only going to take the positive inside this plus minus here reason being is because it's going to be y minus the square root of y squared plus one and y squared plus one is going to be bigger than y and you can't learn a negative number well not in real numbers anyway so you can't do the negative here so we're only going to be taking forward the positive answer there and part C, the R tanch, well, it looks a little bit different, so you're probably going to have to do it in a slightly different way. Again, though, start with y equals R tanch and use the definition there, e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1. Multiply both sides by that fraction, uh, the denom denominator of that fraction. Expand your brackets and then group all your e to the 2x's on one side, anything else goes on the other side. So I've decided here to move the e to the 2x's on the right, the other things can move on to the left. That's just to reduce the amount of negatives I've got in my um, expression here. Factorize out the e to the 2x, and then divide by the fraction that you've then got, so the bracket you've then got. Then take the logarithm, then divide by 2, and there you are, you're at your answer. So therefore, um, r tanch of x is equal to a half ln 1 plus x over 1 minus x. So there we are, all three of those you get in the formula booklet. And now let's have a go at using them. So part a is find r shine of 1. So that's just a case of taking the formula, plugging the number 1 in. So you get ln 1 plus root 2. And in part B, solve cosh x equals 2. Well, it's kind of like the same question, isn't it? If we then um, inverse cosh both sides, we're going to get x equals r cosh 2. So then plug 2 into the r cosh formula, and you're going to get ln uh, 2 plus root 3. But if we remember on the cosh function, uh, it's got two sides to it. So actually, it's going to be both plus ln 2 plus root 3 and minus ln 2 plus root 3. So the actual answers to this question here are plus or minus ln 2 plus root 3. Now you didn't need you won't need to do that for shine because that's a one-to-one -one function here. The inverse didn't need to be restricted and it didn't need to be restricted for tanch as well. So this plus minus here only needs to be used when you're doing a cosh x equals 2 question. Okay, so your turn to have a go at some questions from the textbook then. Pause the video and give these two questions a go. Okay, so in these two form in these two questions then we're going to need to use the formulas. Let's just remind us our shine is the one with x plus in. So it's going to be um, our shine. 2 equals ln 2 plus 2 squared plus 1. So that's going to be ln 2 plus root 5. And there we are, that's the answer for part A. And then moving on to part B, x is going to equal r cosh 3. So plug that into the formula, it's going to give you ln 3 plus the square root of 3 squared minus 1, close brackets, and that's going to give you ln 3 plus root 8, or in fact ln 3 plus 2 root 2. But then if cosh has two solutions, like it always does, one solution over here, one solution over here, then the actual answers x equals are going to be plus or minus ln 
3 plus 2 root 2. So there we are, that's the answer for both of these questions then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 125 exercise, so page 125 exercise 6b. I don't think there's actually too many for this exercise here, so you might as well just have a go at all of them then. Lovely, thanks very much for watching.